Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to our daily town hall here at 530. I'm Michael Wooten. Mary Alice has the night off. Later this half hour, we are going to explain a word that you are hearing a lot in the school reopening debate, and that is cohort. Plus, imagine your child is diagnosed with the rarest of medical conditions, but it's something that you've studied and you can help find a cure. That's the reality for a local family, and you'll want to hear their story ahead. First up for us, though, news that a lot of you have been waiting to hear. We expect that gyms will soon reopen here in New York State. The governor is saying today that he will release guidance on Monday. We've been covering the gym debate pretty extensively here on our town hall newscast. Now, some gym owners have actually sued the governor in the state, saying that they've been illegally singled out. That may now become moot. Now, this gym news comes as the governor said today that bowling alleys can reopen starting Monday at 50% occupancy with face coverings and every other lane closed. There will also be cleaning protocols in place. Now, what will be the rules for gyms and what can we learn from other states where they're already open? We welcome to the show right now David Humphrey, CEO of a company that owns more than 100 Planet Fitness franchises across the United States, including several here in our region and a lot across New York State. David, thanks so much for joining us live here. We really appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, so before we talk about Planet Fitness specifically and your procedures, let me just get your reaction to the news that we are going to get this gym reopening guidance this coming Monday. Uh, this afternoon, I talked to Charlie Casera. He is leading the lawsuit against the state to force the reopening. Um, he's anxious to hear the details on Monday, but he says for now, this is a win. Take it as a win. It's a positive. Your thoughts? Well, I would certainly agree with that. Planet Fitness did not participate in the lawsuit. We weren't sure that was the right message to send in a pandemic, but we certainly agree that getting gyms open and any step that moves toward getting them open is a great thing for New Yorkers. Uh, New Yorkers depend on gyms for their fitness and their health, and that's more important in this current situation than ever. So I certainly agree that it's a great step to see the guidelines coming. We've been asking for guidelines for months. You own, again, dozens of Planet Fitness gyms across the country, including in states where these fitness facilities are already open. What have you learned in those other states as you prepare to reopen here in New York? Great question. Well, you're right. We've been open for months now in 45 other states. It's quite unusual, really, that New York is still closed, especially when the state has been so successful in fighting COVID. And what we've learned is that the guidelines Planet Fitness has created for our 1500 clubs that are open uh, have been extremely effective. We do a whole series of things to keep people safe, uh, starting at the front door where we check temperatures. We have contactless check-in now when people arrive, uh, PPE everywhere, masks in all the appropriate places. We have social distancing all throughout the club. We've shut off every other treadmill and moved things apart to keep people uh, apart from each other where appropriate. Um, and we've suspended our group fitness classes. We just do one-on-one -on -one coaching now for uh, members that are new to the gym because we want them to get off to a great start. So those guidelines, those protocols Planet Fitness developed in all those 45 other states have been incredibly effective in avoiding any kind of COVID outbreak in our facilities. We have not seen it. Uh, we've had 40 million members check in, uh, 40 million check-in occurrences by members over the last three months. Uh, and less than one in 135,000 ever report having caught COVID anywhere, much less from our gym. So it's been remarkably effective when you're careful. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. If you've had any, any instances at any of your clubs um, outside New York, where maybe you've had outbreaks among staff or customers, it sounds like that's not the case, but um, are there procedures and plans in case something like that happens? Oh, sure. One of the great things about gyms, of course, is that we know who comes and goes. Uh, at a restaurant or a bar, people just wander in and out. You never know, really know who you're dealing with. Uh, in a gym, everybody's a member, and we know exactly what time you came in. You have to check in. So uh, the, uh, the reality is that if we ever had to do contact tracing, we'd be extremely well equipped to do that. But it's just not been an issue for us. I want to ask you specifically about this issue of masks. In some places, people are being forced to wear masks while they're working out. Um, is that happening at any of your locations in any of those states? And um, would you urge New York not to make that such a requirement? Well, every state has its own rules. They look at it differently, depending on local circumstances. Um, and I think Americans are getting more comfortable with masks. Generally, 
and while working out in a gym. You know, it's funny, there was a video came out today from a doctor in England who ran 22 miles while wearing a mask the whole way, every second of the way. He was able to do it, and his point was, you can do it too if you, if you are willing to make that commitment. Um, so we don't want to definitively say that masks shouldn't be required. We require them in every state. When you enter the gym, leave the gym, when you're in common areas, when you're in locker rooms, you must be wearing a mask. While you're working out strenuously, uh, we rely on the guidance of each state as to whether to require masks at that moment. Yeah, and we will get that guidance again on Monday. Looking ahead, I wonder if you are worried as we head into the fall. I mean, we all heard the CDC director say this week um, that he believes we're going to have this second wave plus flu season. He's really concerned about that. And I wonder if you're concerned that if it gets bad, gyms are going to have to shut down again and the financial impact of that. Well, if that happened, it certainly would be a very serious financial problem. But to be honest, we're more focused on the public health issues. I mean, our frustration in this whole period has been that gyms are the way that the average New Yorker gets healthy and stays healthy. I mean, we've all been so focused on COVID, we forget that over 50,000 New Yorkers a year die from the preventable and, and curable uh, causes, uh, consequences of obesity, right? Heart attack, stroke, hypertension, diabetes, 53,000 New Yorkers a year. Uh, and we have not been able to help those people avoid that by getting into the gym and working out. I'll tell you another thing that concerns me is that there's a lot of evidence now that when a vaccine comes, it may be less effective for those people who are seriously overweight. That would be hugely unfortunate. And if there's really nothing you could do better for your health right now, than get into the gym, take the weight off and strengthen yourself so that if you do unfortunately catch it, you will have, you'll be more likely to have a milder case rather than the more serious consequences. Yeah, we've talked to doctors who have stressed that the importance um, even during the lockdowns early on of getting outside, running, yeah. walking, trying to stay as healthy as you can because you want as strong an immune system as you can have uh, should you be diagnosed with this disease. David Humphrey is the CEO of a company that owns more than 100 Planet Fitness gyms, including six here in Western New York and a lot of others across New York State and upstate New York. Really nice to have you on the show, David. Have a great weekend. Thank you. A great pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, and we'll be covering, of course, that guidance on Monday. Next on our town hall, we are all working so hard these days to avoid catching the coronavirus, right? Well, it's hard to imagine people are volunteering to get it, or at least they might. The National Institute on Allergy and Infectious Diseases is considering something called a human challenge trial. The NIH is making its own strain of coronavirus that doctors would inject into volunteers after they receive an experimental vaccine. Now, in normal trials, one group gets a vaccine, another gets a placebo, and then they kind of go about life. Researchers follow them to see if the vaccine works and if it's safe. A challenge trial, on the other hand, can involve a smaller group of people and work more quickly. What's being considered here in the U.S. is what's happening across the pond at Oxford University in Britain, where a top expert there had this to say. A lot of people feel very passionately that they should be and that the tiny risk is uh, worth it for the benefit of developing a vaccine or a drug faster. We can do a challenge trial with 40 people and get a very informative result on whether a vaccine is working. So some important things to keep in mind. Challenge trial participants would be quarantined and this would likely take place in areas where the spread of the virus is very low. It's important to note as well that even if these trials happen, and remember they aren't set up at this point, this could take even up to a year to prepare, but if it happens, they would not replace the large scale phase three trials that are already underway across the country right now. And on top of all of that, a lot of scientists think challenge trials are unethical because there aren't any proven treatments for the virus. So if a volunteer gets seriously sick, that can be dangerous. We'll keep you posted though on what happens with all of this.